Hello everybody, what is up? Welcome back to Strange Foodie TV. I am Buddy Strange and let's just get into this weekly wrap up and pick em video. What do you guys say? First off, looking back at week two, the win of the week is going to be the Arizona Hot Shots. I had pretty much the Apollos and the Hot Shots even here, but I, I don't know. There was something about Arizona's comeback victory. I mean, they did it with basically the whole fourth quarter. They scored late in the third, but they were down 12 to zero to Memphis, which I was super excited, man. And then they blew it. But anyway, <laughs> no, Arizona, they basically took that fourth quarter over and dominated and were able to get on top 20 to 18 over the Memphis Express. And yeah, I just have to give it to them for that. Just I mean, the Apollos looked dominant as well. They looked really good. They kind of had to come back themselves. And then they, after that, they just completely handled the game, commanded the game. But I don't know. There was something about Arizona's comeback victory just in the fourth quarter that I thought gave them the edge this week. So win of the week, Arizona Hot Shots. Good job. All right, the loss of the week is going to be the Atlanta Legends who just basically... <laughs> Oh, they, they, uh, I mean, they got pretty much dominated most of the game. They had a lead there for, for a little bit, but after that, yeah, they just lost it. Ran over by the San Diego fleet. If you're traveling from Atlanta all the way to San Diego across the country, and you've only had a couple months to prepare and only a week to prepare for this game, yeah, it's probably not going to be the best, <laughs> best performance you're going to have, so, you know. Kind of saw that one coming. That's why I predicted it. But anyway, that being said, loss of the week, Atlanta Legends. Oof. That that name isn't <laughs> isn't starting to look too good there for you, Atlanta. But uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right, next up, players of the week. SVTV's players of the week off offensive player of the week is going to be Charles Johnson of the Orlando Apollos. There were actually a lot to choose from here. Garrett Gilbert looked good again. Kenneth Farrell looked really good for the Commanders. Even Walford pulled out a good performance late in the game. I mean, he didn't start that, that hot, but he, he picked it up and got himself a couple scores. And then lastly, my last choice is Memphis's own Zach Stacy getting the first ever 100 yard rushing game in AAF history. He is now the record holder for the most rushing yards in a single game in the AAF. Good job, Zach Stacy. At least something good is coming from that offense. <laughs> but anyway, he doesn't get it this week. Charles Johnson, receiver for Orlando Apollos, getting like 192 yards. I, I don't know the amount of catches right off the top of my head, but he, it seemed like he was getting the ball all night. Gary, he was Gary Gilbert's favorite target. He got a touchdown as well. He was on fire, and he gets Offensive Player of the Week this week. Defensive Player of the Week is going to be Carter Schultz of the Salt Lake Stallions. The Salt Lake City Stallions. Salt Lake Stallions, I think that's kind of interchangeable. But he got two sacks. His presence was felt for sure during that game. He got a couple more pressures outside of the sacks, too. So he, he wasn't getting all sacks, but he was around the ball all day, it seemed. And he definitely deserves Defensive Player of the Week this week. And lastly, special teams player of the week is actually going to be two because it's it's a combo. They're both related. Jamar Summers and Shahid Salmon. Sal Salmon. Sa Salmon. Salmon. <laughs> However you want to say it. or I, I, I'm not sure how he wants it to be said. I heard Salmon during the broadcast, but I mean, I, I say Salmon myself. But anyway, Shahid and Jamar Summers pulled off probably the best special teams play in the AAF so far, which was a forced fumble strip. Just Jamar Summers just ripped the ball out of there. And Shahid Salmon, after a big scramble for the ball, which ended, go <laughs> ended up going into the end zone, Shahid Salmon came up with it in the end zone for a touchdown. And I'll show it on the screen right now. Thinking about play of the week, but I've got a couple others that I want to show rather, so I just thought I'd put it here instead of giving it the play of the week. Because there were just, there were a lot of good plays this week that I enjoyed, so it's kind of hard for me to pick a play of the week. But that being said, let's get into the play of the week. The play of the week 
or rather the plays of the week, I should say, because yet again, this week, there are two, and I... <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be a theme where I have to just do plays of the week from here on out because AAF football is so fun and enjoyable or, uh, you know, it'll settle down and my excitement will settle down and we'll get one play a week or whatever. But anyway, that being said, here are SVTV's plays of the week. Five for Arizona. They're going to keep it on the ground and they're going to be glad that they do so. Because Justin Stockton doing some things as he breaks into the house from distance. My goodness, what a run from the kid from Texas Tech. Pocket collapse, gets away from Barnes. Nelson throws it back oh. over his shoulder, and Jeff Luke almost had a pick. What is that? <laughs> what in the wide world of sports is that? It was 98 Tyreek McCord who got there. He got away from Barnes initially, and then the linebacker McCord had him by the waist. And just, I mean, Escobar had, did Escobar actually catch that? Yes, he did. He actually caught that on the sideline. Third and 16. All right, how about that pass, guys? <laughs> no, that's uh, very Mahomes-esque. And actually, if, uh, if I can find it, I'll throw the tweet up. Mahomes actually tweeted about that pass very uh mahomes Favre kind of, kind of play and that was definitely fun even though it wasn't for a big gain it was still it was still pretty cool all right let's get into how i did last week which is going to be pretty quick because because i was perfect four for four <laughs> all right no longer perfect zero out of four we are perfect four for four which is great news i'm so excited i'm so happy we did it we finally got a 100 percent week and which is good because last week over four meaning that brings my total up to 50 percent four of eight and hopefully it gets better from here i'm shooting for 60 percent but you know which is what i did for the nfl but you know nfl there's 14 to 16 games a week and here there's <laughs> there's only four so it's kind of when, once you limit the number of games down a bunch, it kind of, if you have a bad week, <laughs> it ruins your score for a while. But anyway, no, four for four this past week, 50% on the year. So excited. That being said, let's get into this next week. It is going to be a good week of football, except probably for Memphis. <laughs> Again, man, they are just on a death row, it seems. Just a killer's row of teams that they have to face here early in the season. But anyway, <laughs> that's not the first game. The first game is Arizona versus Salt Lake City. Arizona coming back. They looked good. Their passing game is really good. The receivers are very talented, very fast. Walford has an arm. <laughs> and then even in their run game, they're getting it done. And then on the other side, Salt Lake, they just haven't been able to get anything going on offense. Their defense has struggled a little bit, although, I mean, they did do well against Birmingham, but, I mean, still, they haven't been outstanding. They've been okay, but not outstanding. Their offense is a glaring miss right now, and that is why I'm going to call Arizona winning 27 to 13 over Salt Lake City. I don't know. I just, I don't see their offense performing well against Arizona's defense. And then on the other side, I think Arizona can handle their, their own on offense with Walford and the bunch. So Arizona wins. <laughs> All right, game two is going to be Memphis versus oof, Orlando Apollos. Probably, if I were doing power rankings, I would put as the best team in the AAF so far. And whew, after facing Arizona last week, who I would put number two, close number two, but number two. And then coming back to face Orlando in Orlando, I just don't see it happening for Memphis. I think Orlando does win, and oh man, I think they win pretty convincingly, 28-9. to nine. I think Memphis's defense is a little better than what Orlando has faced in these past two games. So I think Memphis's defense can hold them under 30, but their offense I don't think can score over 10. Uh, and that is assuming making an ass out of you and me 
that uh, <laughs> Hackenberg stays in there or they put in Silvers, which they did in game one, which I also didn't agree with. I really want to see Zach Mettenberger. I really want to see what he's got. If Zach Mettenberger does get in, I would, I would probably say 28 to 13 or so. So I don't think it's a big difference in this game because Orlando's defense is also, <laughs> they're pretty damn good as well. But I, I really want to see Zach Mettenberger in the game. I really want to see what he can do, even if it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it sucks, I think you should give him a chance in real in a real game time situation. Hackenberg showed that he can't score many points and score zero and then puts up 12. And he didn't even put up the 12. Real, I mean, he put up six, but Zach Stacy was pretty much the offense this past week. I just, ah, come on, put Matt Berger just for one week. Singletary, come on. You want winners. <laughs> Put in Men Burger. <laughs> anyway, uh, Orlando wins. Game three, Birmingham versus Atlanta. And it's no surprise here, Atlanta, I'd probably put at the bottom of my rankings at number eight. They're just not a good team right now. And there's nothing that indicates that that will change anytime soon. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they pull a game out or something. But ah, they just, on both sides of the ball, they don't look that good and I think Perez can take advantage of that even Richardson <laughs> can take advantage of that he's been playing pretty well himself and then the Birmingham defense is one of the best defenses in the AF and I think they can handle handle their business as well and I I think Birmingham does win 20 to 6 over the Atlanta legends man that uh, that name's starting to <laughs> starting to get ironic if I were them I pro I I personally would have picked, I know this is stupid, but <laughs> I, I think the Peaches would have been a better name. The Atlanta Peaches, I don't know. I, I thought of that one day and I was like, you know what, that, <laughs> because they're known for their Peaches. Atlanta and Georgia is known for their Peaches. So I don't know. The Atlanta Peaches. Might think of about that name change there, Atlanta, because uh, the season keeps going the way it's going. You might need a, you might be required <laughs> to change your name from the Legends. Anyway. Birmingham wins. All right, the last game of the week is going to be San Antonio versus San Diego in San Diego. San Antonio is looking like a really good team. They did let Orlando come back and beat them this past week, but San Antonio is looking really good. They're probably middle of the pack, like number four, I think, in the rankings for me. You know what? I'm just going to lay out the rankings. Number one, Apollo's number two, Hot Shots. Number three, Birmingham. Iron, number four, the Commanders, number five. San Diego Fleet, number six. Memphis, number seven. Salt Lake, and last, number eight, Atlanta. So, San Antonio's middle of the pack. Very interchangeable, I would say, with Birmingham at number three and four. They're, they're hovering around three and four. They are really good. Well, they are pretty complete. Their offense looks good. Their run game looks fantastic. They can pass when they need to, but overall, they look like they're a step behind the Hot Shots and the Apollos. That being said, San Diego on the other side have been competing. They're in games. They're doing well. But in this one, I don't see them winning over the Commanders. Even if, even at home, I think San Antonio, it's less of a, <laughs> it's less of a trip than Atlanta. And San Antonio is a better team as well. I think San Antonio can go into San Diego and win. 16 to 6 over San Diego. I think the San Antonio defense can hold pretty strong. And then on offense, I don't see them scoring a bunch of points, but I think they come in there and pretty much dominate the game. It it doesn't look like it from just 60 having 16 points, but I, I'm from the tone of the game. I think by the end of it, you'll say, damn, they they <laughs> they pretty much had the game the whole time. And yeah, I think they hold a lead at, at least 80% of the game, if not the whole game. And yeah, San Antonio wins. <laughs> All right, everybody, that is going to do it for us here today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I hate to say it, but we lost a couple of subs over this past week. I don't know why, but I hate to see it. Hate to see you go, but love to watch you leave. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hopefully they change their mind, and hopefully you decide to hit that subscribe button anyway no comment anything down below that you want me to see and please comment 
anything down below relating to this pick em. If you want to pick down below, please do. This is, I want this to be a hub of everyone picking the teams, picking the games, include the scores that you think is going to happen, any bold predictions, anything like that. I would love to hear who what and why and everything like that it would be such a great thing and i would love to create that hub that community of aaf weekly pick em <laughs> on my channel that'd be awesome so do that in the comments down below who you think is gonna win this week and possibly give a give a score <laughs> let's see let's see how close we can get anyway be on the lookout for a gaming video should be coming soon. <laughs> Sorry I wasn't able to get one out this past week, but uh, one's cooking up and in the oven, so it's on its way. Anyway, that being said, I'm Buddy Strange. This is Strange Voodoo TV. Keep it strange, people. I'll see you in the next one, and peace out.